Hello, uh, and welcome to our my conversation today with uh, Anesimo, Anesimo Almeida. Uh, I'm John Vasconcelos. I'm the president of the South Coast Community Foundation, based here in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And we're so excited uh, to be a part of Fabric Festival for the last two years, uh, and was very excited when the curators asked me to uh, meet our illustrious guest and have a conversation uh, with Anesimo around uh, bridging cultures of Portugal and America. Here at the South Coast Community Foundation, we have had a wonderful opportunity to really elevate uh, arts and culture in our region. And there's no way that you can do that in New Bedford and Fall River without making sure you are focusing on Portuguese and Azorean culture. Uh, and the Fabric Festival is just one of the many examples that we've been able to do, uh, do the just that. But today is about a conversation, uh, and I am over the moon excited about talking with my, my new friend Anesimo around this very topic and how this has changed. Uh, this has been a subject of uh, Professor Almeida's work for decades, uh, and we're really looking forward to sort of hearing more from him uh, and talking about where we are now in 2020 in this very unique time. Uh, not just for those of us in Massachusetts, but certainly globally, and the world has certainly changed. And so uh, welcome, Anesimo. So glad to have you join us, uh, and thank you for being here. A pleasure, real pleasure. Well, I thought I would start off uh, by really grounding ourselves in sort of like the moment that we are in right now, uh, with everything that has been happening, uh, both globally, here in America, public health with the COVID, uh, you know, the attention, I'm, I'm amazed as, as someone of Azorian descent, my grandparents uh, emigrated here in the 1910s, uh, and I finally made it back to the Azores uh, about four years ago and have made it a regular trip back in mainland Portugal earlier this year. I actually woke up in a, a beautiful site in uh, the far eastern end of Alentasia near, near the Spanish border. Uh, when I heard that I might not be able to leave the country for 30 days. And I have to tell you, it was mixed feelings that uh, allowed me to leave uh, because it was pretty special. Uh, but real, you know, the fact that the world has fallen in love with the Azores, uh, I think in a lot of ways, uh, the New York Times seems to have discovered a whole new country in Western Europe called Portugal. Uh, I would love to have you sort of reflect on what is, what is the moment look like right now? for bridging Portuguese and American culture. And then, then I'd love to unpack that with you. Well, um, I, uh, my son once, uh, one of my sons, Duarte, told me that you can never get, uh, don't ask me, uh, don't ask my dad a question uh, if you don't have time because he cannot give you a short answer. <laughs> so uh, I want to go back to the times when I came to the United States and I visited the U.S. My parents were here in 1970 and 1971. Then uh, in one of those visits, I was talking with a Portuguese friend on South Main Street in Fall River. And I was talking naturally, talking Portuguese. And this friend was, you know, you know moderately edu educated uh, Portuguese. And he told me, lower your voice so they don't know your Portuguese. Mm. In Fall River. Okay. And uh, another story that I like to tell uh, that, you know, I tell lots of stories because when they, I feel that they, they mean something and this one tells you a lot, okay? For this is for the people to, who are listening to us uh, who, who have no idea of how things were in 1970 when, when, uh, when uh, uh, this most recent wave of Portuguese immigrants uh, arrived. Uh, I was talking to John, uh, Joseph Freitas. Joseph Freitas was in California. He was a lawyer, um, a very you know, successful lawyer. And he told me, um, he, he was told that I was accepted at Brown. I was uh, accepted in the philosophy department as a graduate student. And he told me, point blank, this is Portuguese American. He said, well, um, uh, I'm going to tell you one thing. You, with a last name and the in a vowel, you're not going to go anywhere in this country. Wow. I wish you were, you were alive today uh, to ask him if you knew how to spell Obama. <laughs> but that's, that's how it was then. That's how it was then. And uh, I um, remember a few students, uh, and I knew these, these students uh, who were uh, going to night school at you know, working factories and going to Bristol Community College 
and uh, some of them started going to UMass uh, Dartmouth. Actually, I was one of the few going during the summer to uh, to to um, do something during the summer. I uh, signed up for courses uh, at UMass Dartmouth to improve my English, and uh, um, this is how I got used uh, to the American uh, uh, American university atmosphere. But um, Talking about the Azores, this was something that always amazed me, was that talking about the Azores here was, was like talking, uh, not even the moon, because at that time people were talking a lot about the moon. It was something remote, nobody cared, nobody had the slightest curiosity about the Azores. Uh, uh, not to, you know, same thing with Portugal. And this went on and on and on. I remember when we started uh, doing all kinds of things at Brown, we did, uh, uh, I, I was involved always with, with you, you may start, but that, that, at that time was Southeastern Massachusetts University. Uh, I remember the Spring Festival in Fall River. I told uh, uh, Michael Benavides that uh, uh, 40, uh, 40 years ago, uh, the initiative was the Fall River Spring Festival done at Bristol Community College with, with Sandy Fraze, uh, who is now a lawyer. And it was a big thing for the Portuguese in Fall River. The college was paying attention to, it was nothing like what uh, Michael is doing now with Fabric. This is a totally modern, open thing. Then it was sort of a, a, a attention to the arts and crafts of, of the historian culture. It was a very, uh, it was a very uh, not low key, but but it was a look at the past and the look at the the, the culture of, of the immigrants. Uh, and uh, but at that time it was a big big thing for the community. It, it went on for three or four years, I think. But then then it it stopped. And um, but I remember I talked to I started talking about the Azores. I was invited by teachers to um, to basically they had questions like why are the Azores like this? Why are the Portuguese like this? Why they why don't the parents uh, get involved uh, in the PTA programs? So I felt the need to explain to them the Azorian culture. I wrote about it. I was invited to conferences, etc. But that's what, that was, well, the, they were the only ones interested, but basically because they had these basic uh, questions uh, about the students. But the Azores, no. Uh, I, um, uh, well, th at that time, they were not, flocks were not easy uh, also. Uh, but when they started becoming regular, I went easily from here to the Azores and, uh, all of a sudden, well, you mentioned the New York Times. In the uh, early 90s, there was an article in the New York Times uh, by, uh, by um, I forget the name of the journalist, and the headline was this, the Azores, the Azores. Uh, was something like a, a combination of Ireland, Hawaii, and New Zealand on the title. But it had no impact. I was the one who was, you know, very pleased because this had made headlines. And, yeah, right. um, I remember uh, going to Portugal with a journalist from Pamela, forget her last name, uh, no, no, Phyllis, 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 something, Phyllis, uh, uh, from the Providence Journal, and she did. She wrote something about the Azores, and but it was she was critical because at the time also the conditions were not, you know, uh, Americans, you know, if they didn't have the right orange juice. Uh, uh, they would complain right away and they would come right. back and say, oh, you know, how did you like it? I didn't like the orange juice at all. Okay, fine. <laughs> Americans have this thing or some little thing in a room or something, well, that destroys the trip. Right. But uh, I also, uh, things, uh, uh, the interest in the Azores uh, picked up, um, there was one interest in the Azores when uh, the earthquake hit uh, Tercera in January of 1980. I remember the, the Channel 10 here in Providence, sent a crew to the Azores uh, uh, to, uh, um, to make a few uh, uh, stories about uh, the reconstruction. And they needed someone to help uh, with the, the, the Portuguese translation because uh, they, want they wanted to have it on the screen. So I went to channel, learned a lot about television, seeing how it operated. I was there for a week with them and they did something, it was three minutes, five segments of three minutes about the reconstruction in the Azores. Well, they, for, for us, it was a big thing to have. You know, the Azores, it was you know, a tragic, tragic thing. But, but for about 30 years, this was about it. A thing here and there, but nothing, nothing. Right, right. Then all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, uh, what something started happening, and I don't know. Well, there were the flights, uh, lots of, but it was I think with the explosion of social media, people right. started traveling and they started posting things. And and but but I must say, the Azores also, 
there was a huge jump uh, uh, the conditions there, the, 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 the kind of the lifestyle it changed uh, and they became, uh, uh, I mean, they modernized quite a bit. So, so the things that bothered the visitors, uh, you know, uh, sort of disappeared and got solved and people started uh, going to the islands and, 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 and seeing it and then, uh, and then writing about it. They were, they were uh, uh, all of a sudden, uh, the Azores became, um, sort of a hot topic and uh, everybody was uh, posting pictures and uh, 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 journals you know, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and all of a sudden the, the media, uh, uh, this is also about Portugal because all of a sudden Lisbon, Porto and the Azores mm -hmm. became three hot topics. And I, I've been watching this, I've been collecting a lot of this, uh, this stuff. And this is more in the last 10 years, but particularly in the last five years, I would say it's a huge uh, curve, ge a geometric progress progression uh, starting about 10 years ago, but then increased dramatically in the last five years. You see the Azores uh, as the top destination, island destination in the world, uh, 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 in this journal, that magazine, uh, uh, this uh, 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 British or uh, uh, even Australian press. Uh, and and uh, of course, uh, this is, uh, for us, it was not news, we knew that the islands were beautiful, but to see, now I, I go to, uh, I go to any place I go, I start talking to someone, I talk to a doctor, uh, uh, he says, oh, the Azores, oh, I want to go there, I have a, a trip scheduled for, you know, I go to a store, I talk to someone and everybody, and now everybody has family from there. Lots of people are springing everywhere with connections. But one thing, and this is something that may have, uh, uh, may apply to you too, uh, I have, I have, there is one particular case of one Azorian who has been taught, who had been all his life, he's about my age now, um, detached from the Azores. Now he's so interested, he's reading so much about the Azores, he's reading all the books that you, you Tagus Press is printing. I, I direct, I could direct a, a, an Azorian series there. He's reading them all and he wants to discuss them. So we, we used to go to an Udinese restaurant in East Providence. And uh, we used to have scheduled uh, uh, a lot, five hours for our uh, uh, dinners, wow. five hours. Okay. And now we're doing it by Zoom. So he finishes a book and we have two to three hours conversation. And this is something totally different, uh, to totally new, is Portuguese Americans, Azorian Americans, who did not have any connection. That's right. All of a sudden right. have discovered the Azores and want to talk and learn about the Azores. This yeah. is something new. And for me, an old man like me, this is comforting because I waited 40, for 40 years for this kind, 40 some years, because yeah. I'm you know, almost 50 years for these things yeah. to happen. That, that completely resonates uh, for me. You know, as I mentioned, both sets of my grandparents came over from, uh, uh, from San Miguel uh, in the 19 teens, and none of them ever went back. Uh, my parents um, never made it back. They were unfortunately supposed to fly back for their first trip on September 12th, 2001. So unfortunately, flights weren't happening. And as a result, my dad has since passed. And my mom, I think, is you know, not likely to go back. And I also remember my vovó, you know, she was born in Roberta Grande, uh, speaking in her broken English in the 70s and 80s about these new immigrants. And she used a term that I'm not going to use, but you know exactly the term that she used about okay, how okay. they don't know how to fit in. And how they don't know how to fit in. And it was such a this moment for me. And then fast forward to being at the Portuguese consulate uh, after a performance at the Zaiterian of Maritza, the father singer, and you know, beautiful woman, I just had to go up and say hi and thank her for it. And boy, did she nail me. She said, oh, you're, you're from the Israel, how's your Portuguese? I said, <laughs> I, I grew up where you didn't want to learn Portuguese because yeah. to your friend's story, do mm -hmm. not let on that you could be Portuguese. It was this weird shame element, and in hindsight, it's like, what an absolute heartbreaking lost opportunity that was. And so to your friend's point, I am, you know, I'm 59 years old, and I am making up for lost time, and, you know, with the rest of the world, and now we go back, you know, my husband, who's a, you know, total wasp, uh, you know, grew up in Northern California, probably loves it there as much as I do, um, and really trying to see what's happening. And I got to tell you, to, you know, to Michael Benefiti's uh, and, and Antonio and Sophia and Jesse's vision around Fabric Festival. When Michael first started talking with me about 
um, a contemporary art festival, you know, grounded in what was happening in Portugal, I, I had this moment that reminded me, it's like, yeah, all that looking backwards, that heritage stuff, so critically beautiful and important and necessary, but not ultimately defining. And the ability to think about that, and I was, you know, speaking with an, uh, Antonio about the curated videos of the music and having these two men perform, you know, Queer Fado uh, out of Lisbon was just, oh my God, it did my heart such good to see it's Fado expressed in a way that mattered. Pardon? It's I mean, it's it was, it is it, it just just amazing, and and then this sort of like lost time, and and I, and I'm curious, uh, on SMO, if you can talk a little bit about you know because you use this wonderful phrase, uh, uh, and I I hope I don't mispronounce it, Lusalandia, you know yeah. the idea of us being an island with America floating all around it, has that changed? Do you still think about us in that context? And uh, I, I don't use this term anymore. I use it in the past because I don't see it happening because we were isolated. We were, uh, when I came up with the idea, it was for a title of a book I published in 1975 to collect the articles I was publishing in the Portuguese Times. And we were an island, really, surrounded by America by all sides. Uh, the definition of island was, you know, a portion of land surrounded by, by sea, and we were surrounded by America. And uh, the Portuguese were totally living in the past totally live in Portugal, missing Portugal and meeting, getting, well, one of the reasons was, you know, they did not speak English. They also did not connect with the other community. The other community did not, did not share the language and uh, saw them as strangers, as people who were not fitting, like you said about your parents. And the, the new community wasn't fitting and they were, you know, they were criticizing them. And, uh, uh, and uh, so, <clears throat> um, all of a sudden, I lost my train of thought, thought here. Oh, Luzalandia, yes. So Luzalandia uh, was, uh, I, I, Luzalandia is written with USA in parentheses. Luza means Portuguese. I love it. And uh, uh, to express that idea. But now, now I see a, a very good assimilation in the good sense. Uh, we have, the community still maintains uh, the old, the, the, um, is connected, interconnected, uh, uh, lots of activities going on uh, within the community, but the community, well, um, uh, the older generation has passed away, the new generation speaks English, even the older one speaks, um, speaks English, and they, uh, they are uh, now taking uh, advantage of what's available to them in the outside world. We used to call, to say that Braga Bridge was the longest bridge in the world. Okay, because it connected the U.S. to Portugal, but exactly. now Somerset, uh, Swansea is full of Portuguese. So yeah. you can say you, you tell the joke nowadays. Nobody finds it funny because uh, I must, I have about uh, about twelve houses in Somerset and Swansea of, of my family, and so that as the demographics have changed. The same thing with uh, in Providence it used to be East Providence, Fox Point, and East Providence. Now Sea Concrete, Hobbit, the whole thing, the whole of you know, you go you go to Cape Cod, everywhere you go in Cape Cod, you start talking to someone and someone always tells you, my granddad, my vovo, my vovo. It's amazing. So it just it just everywhere. We were we, Ashley Smith, a Portuguese American um, anthropologist half American, half Portuguese, uh, in the 70s, wrote about <clears throat> the Portuguese <coughs> and, uh, and she was studying the communities of New Bedford and, and for River, she uh, published uh, 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 an article uh, using a famous uh, 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 book by Charles Dickens, the title of A Tale of Two Cities. And she, mm -hmm. But she coined the expression, a, a hidden minority. Oh, we were a you. hidden minority. We're no longer a hidden minority. Everywhere you go, we're not vocal. We're not vocal. We're not hidden anymore. Uh, so, and people are uh, uh, are being becoming more vocal in the sense that they they are letting uh, everybody know that uh, that they are Portuguese because yeah. for a long time they were, but they were not saying this. And this change, this sort of, it's a liberating uh, thing yeah. that is 
happening to them. And they're proud to say, oh, I'm Portuguese. Because why? Because um, uh, the, the newspapers, the media, you know, talk about, you know, in a positive light of Portugal and of the Azores. And, and they want to identify, oh, that's me. You know, my, my ancestors come from there and all this. So there's been a, 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 a so uh, the, the answer to your question is, no, I don't use it anymore because uh, we are not fully assimilated yet and we don't want to be fully assimilated. But we are getting along very well with the world around us and, and slowly uh, uh, and more and more so taking advantage of the opportunities and realizing that we live here. Not I mean, One more thing, once the Portuguese president came in the 80s, came, uh, Maris Soares came and he asked, he sent, he, he asked me, uh, what message should you give to the, to the Portuguese? And I told him, and he's quoted, he's credited for having said it, but I was the one who fed him. He said, he said, you are now in the U.S. It is more important that you become U.S. citizens to so help Portugal more if you become U.S. citizens and, 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 and intervene and, and act uh, and, 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 and become an, an active citizen here. You will help us better uh, uh, than, than if you stay only connected to Portugal. This was the message. The newspapers made headlines and all. Then another thing came. We made, you know, there was, we were, Casa dos Açores here played a very important role um, in, in the uh, 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 late 80s, yeah, around 80s and early 90s when people had to change uh, the green card had to be updated. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we made a big, big campaign, you know, instead of getting the green card, become a citizen. We, I volunteered, I taught, I, I prepared pe people for citizenship. It was a, the effort was to become American, become involved and all this. And this has paid off in the long run. It's not as much, when I, people ask me, uh, how far have we, we, we have gone? I said, I said, not as far as we could or should, but we have gone, we've come a long, a long way. Yeah, yeah. So you touched on this a little bit, but I'm really curious to understand sort of what changed. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned sort of the media framing, uh, the popularity of Portugal uh, and the Azores, but I wonder if there's also an appreciation for the fact that, um, uh, you know, uh, the United States itself is changing. Uh, I mean, we see that in real time with, uh, you know, the, the, the minority majority projection in 2046, I think, where you will no longer have, um, you, you know, however you perceive of that, the white majority uh, and a really becoming much more of a pluralistic society uh, from a variety of, of ethnicities. Uh, and I'm also curious, I mean, just for myself, where you grow up, you, you know, you're born in America, you're convinced of your American exceptionalism, uh, and you quickly realize that there's much more to the world than that, that it is much more complicated. And while America is a truly wonderful and terrific place, uh, there are really truly wonderful and terrific places throughout the world. And I think, you know, Portugal is at the, the top of that list. So I, I'm curious, you know, if, if, um, if there was a natural evolution of this, if there was, uh, you know, as a generational shift, uh, what, what might you put your finger on that, that really brought that, that change? Uh, you asking a question, but you, you put it very, very well. The U.S. changed also. There are lots of things that changed. The community has changed. Uh, because you know the new generation uh, uh, has, but the new generation has been educated in the new environment. The U.S. looks differently at uh, ethnic groups. It all started in the '60s. I remember it's all starting with the, the whole thing of bi bilingualism. It started with with the Cubans. The, the, the was the middle class and upper middle class mm -hmm. of Cubans that started this all out of Florida. I remember I was here and seeing it all. It was and then they decided not you know uh, uh, in Washington not to make it just Spanish but make it uh, uh, for for all the minority groups. I I saw everything. So a lot of the old generation, this is one thing that in the sciences they, they, they say, don't try to convince or to change the mind of old scientists uh, about the new things that have come up. You cannot change them. They are set, their minds are set. They will just get away. They will just disappear from the scenery. And the new people with the new mentality will come up. So don't waste your time changing their minds. And this is what happens. So it's this new generation comes up and it has a new outlook. It looks different. It has traveled a lot more than the Americans have ever traveled. The young people start you know, traveling. You know, they, they go everywhere in Europe. You know, not all of them, but lots of them do. And, and so it is a new mindset 
the one of America. And uh, of course, the Portuguese Americans, uh, also educated in this environment, you know, have a different attitude about their past. And but America also has a, a different attitude about. It. So it's always a, a mixed combination of things. That it's all, this is all intertwined. But one important thing is this: these are new people uh, who grew up uh, at different times, and things are changing so rapidly. And the new generation is always uh, 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 is now more and more uh, aware of, of all the changes that, that are occurring. And, and, and again, you don't have the old guard you know, fighting anymore because they, they simply you know, disappeared, you know, they, they, the time has passed. And the other ones who are still around are too old and they cannot do anything. I mean, you have Portuguese grandparents you know, accepting uh, uh, that it, uh, his or her granddaughter is a gay couple or is may, whatever. And, you know, the, many of them may not like it, but they say, what am I going to do? Uh, what am I going to do? You know, so, uh, but that, that this happens, in, you know, you know, divorce is the same story. I remember the huge problem that divorce was, you know, and now, you know, uh, uh, so, so times have changed. Uh, the, yeah, well, you've said it. I'm, I'm just. I'm simply adding to what you have said. Yes. No, no it was I, not just us. It was. Yeah. No, but I also, appreciate one that. Thing, but yeah, also please. Portugal, but also Portugal changed. So the Portuguese, when they go, when the Americans go to Portugal, they are surprised because the idea that they had of Portugal was an old-fashioned, uh, very backward country, and they come back and. And say, my goodness, that's not at all what I expected. Right. They say, you know, those people are. They seem to be so well informed. They seem to to know so much about the world. And I'm so many of them tell me I feel ignorant when talking to them and all this stuff. So, so, so all this, this, yeah, yeah. all no, this contributes to a total change of environment. Yeah, no, and that, that, that last point really resonates for me. I remember the first time we went to the Azores I'm about four years ago, we did sort of the quintessential, uh, you know, the the the, the uh, you know, the the the, the uh, you know, go tapas and you know, all the the sort of food and the cultural stuff that you would expect to do on your first kind of traditional visit. The second trip, because I got to know some of the curators through fabric, I said, I want to see contemporary. Uh, San Miguel and the contemporary art museum there, the galleries, walk and talk, tremors, all these things that are happening. The street art utterly blew me away. And while I had certainly grew affectionate for the Azores on that first trip, that second trip, I fell in love. Uh, and that was because it was a uh, forward thinking, which again, growing up the way I did, I was expecting to go back there and, you know, have people with the hats and the tassels and, you know, with the, you know, an oxen and a cart. Um, and it's like, oh, wow, highways and cars. Uh, it, it's sort of ridiculous. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, I mean, I come back here and particularly for places like Fall River and New Bedford, which are trying to find their own future after their complicated past, trying to embrace you know, the cultural opportunity that this bridge, that this connectivity allows. And this is why I think Fabric Festival is such a brilliant thing. But I'm also curious about, you know, how Southern New England sort of embraces this and builds on this opportunity in a way that kind of, to be honest with you, just gets some of the magic that I'm feeling, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, same with the, you know, the museums and all the cultural stuff that we got to appreciate on the mainland. I was just, wow. I, and I felt so stupid uh, that, 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 and so, um, you know, the hubris uh, that I had as an American for thinking I was going to go there and experience something. I'm like, yeah, no, open your eyes and open your mind. Uh, it was really quite powerful, but um, uh, I would love to hear your comments on you know, what do places like Fall River and New Bedford, um, how do they think about their role as the other end of that bridge across the uh, Rio Atlantico? The potential is tremendous, I see, um, because, uh, see, people, uh, some, I talk, to, uh, talk about this sometimes with people from Portugal who come to visit the U.S., because they have family and the same for even New Bedford, and they say, oh, things haven't changed because, well, they come, they, they, they meet the family members and they stay at their house, or they, stay, they stay in their houses and, you know, people have to work <clears throat> and they take them, uh, well, they, they cannot take them to the best restaurants because they have to pay, the, to pay 
um, the bill, and uh, oh so they don't, they don't, many of them don't never, never get to see right. the great things of America around here. Yeah. But then I tell them, look, you have not realized one thing. There's a lot of Azorians and Portuguese that grew in the Fall River, but are now scattered all over the country and all over the region. And they are doing their things. Always with this thing, the Azorians are never very vocal. Even within the Portuguese culture, the Azorians are the least vocal. Or they're quiet. They do their thing very, you know, su in a subdued way, uh, uh, in a sotto voce. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. this is, um, they, uh, so, but they are there. You start, you, and so there is a latent power out there, uh, a, a whole bunch of <laughs> huge number <clears throat> of people who are uh, ready to be big, to be touched. And, 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 and this, for, I've told Michael Benevich, he's doing this, he is awakening, he is telling them we are here. And they are uh, and, and presenting for River and New Bedford in a new light and, and taking advantage of the potential that the, the actual physical city has to be, to be a magnet for uh, a Portuguese capital of restaurants, you know, arts, uh, 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 music, the whole bit, uh, the whole bit, not just the processions and the, ch right. the church. I mean, uh, uh, nothing that, uh, against it, but there's more to the Portuguese culture than just this. So uh, uh, in New Bedford, this has been done a lot by the Wadey Museum. I'm now a trustee of the Wadey Museum, and this is part of also of this change. Uh, they make sure that there are some Portuguese and Portuguese-American trustees, and the Portuguese committee is doing all sorts of things, but UMass is also doing, uh, uh, has been doing a, a tremendous job. In Tagus Press, that I'm, uh, I, told, I told you earlier, I'm co-directing the series, it's publishing two Azorian books in translation per year, and we have already come up with five, and we, uh, we have lined up for the next five years Years, and these books for the first time are available in English so people out there anybody can buy a book about Azorian culture and read about the Azores and all this and they are I'm sorry uh, they are uh, I, I should have disconnected the phone uh, okay. I hope my wife picks it up and okay so uh, all right I apologize. Uh, so, um, so um, all these, so New in, in New Bedford, you best start with and the Wheeling Museum are uh, have, be have, be have become magnets for, for, for this transformation, for this change. And I made sure I got Michael Bonavidge involved already with the museum. He's, he, yeah. he is also with the Port Portuguese subcommittee, and, and uh, uh, pretty soon he will be also a, a trustee there. I'll make sure that he gets there because he's <laughs> he's dynamite. He is dynamite. I mean, yeah. people who I I bring people uh, uh, to Portugalia market uh, just so people can breathe a new air of you know there's Portuguese culture in a totally different yeah. it's a pleasure. and they all have they all amazed when they get there. So these things are popping out. Okay, and again. Um, the, I, I even forgot your question was. I got excited about talking the potential about the potential and all this. No, it, um, yeah, no, you're speaking right to it. Keep adding on to this and, and, right. and doing more and more, uh, doing more and more. So I think that we are in the right track. track. And also taking advantage of it's unfortunate that that COVID nineteen came when right. there was so much publicity about the Azores and people who were everybody wanted to go to the Azores and to Portugal and this happened uh, uh, now. So we have to. So when, when this pandemic is over, uh, I don't think it's going to take a, a lot of work because uh, it's piled up. People want to get out, and and and, and uh, so so um, I only see potential. I uh, every um, every other day there's someone else who, who shows up, who appears out of the blue. Oh yes, I'm Portuguese. I'm interested. I am doing this, and I'm doing this. Uh, I'm doing that. I want to do this. Or I want to do that. And I'm you. Know, you, uh, you have your foundation. You have been. Uh, uh, tapping and, and and I'm sure people also good. You can talk about uh, uh, about that um, and tell tell stories also. So it it's 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 a, it's a great time. It for me after I, I came in 1970. It's about 50 years. I in 72, but I came two years just only as a visitor. Uh, to see this change in 50 years uh, is is for me is a great source of of, of pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. It's sort of. Um been so exciting uh, and it's something that had you shared uh, had I thought about this 15 years ago when I moved back to New Bedford after being 
uh, you know, living in different parts of the country, uh, that this would be happening, I would, I would not have believed you. Uh, and I remember that, I think I probably scared Michael Benavides when I first met him, because I, in a lot of ways I said, oh my God, you have, you have found the Holy Grail in a way that sort of has elevated this in a way that's like, how did we not ever think about this? Uh, in this context, and it took that sort of boldness that I love, you know, you talked a little bit about the Azorian personality, which is not prone to boldness, uh, that, uh, you know, not to put words in your mouth, but, but it's sort of like, Michael has done something, and he also does it in a beautifully uh, uh, humble way, uh, yeah, he that does. I, maybe is quintessentially Azorian, uh, almost not believing his own success, and I'm like, oh, please, Michael. <laughs> All you got to see is just watch that front door. Uh, and it's just, it's really, uh, really exciting. Uh, but you do, you touch on, you know, the impact of, of, of COVID-19 and, and the pandemic and the ability to travel and the challenge of how do we keep up this? Because I, I completely agree with you. And I hope that what we're looking at is, is this going to be um, sort of a buildup of pressure so that when we are able to like once again, travel with you know a little more uh ease and frequency uh that there will be uh an eagerness to re-engage in a way because i think i think that if there's any if there's i mean there's a lot of lessons to be learned from COVID, right uh and not the least of which is how interconnected we are as a globe uh and how quickly this all works uh you know despite what what folks in washington may may frame it as um it, you know this is this is we're all sort of in this together uh, and, uh, you know, figuring out how to manage it and address it is uh, going to take a very different mindset uh, than I think we have. And with regards, I love knowing that you're a trustee at the Whale Museum. I'm an enormous fan of Amanda McMullen and what she is doing there and uh, certainly what the organization has. Uh, and, and it's not lost on me because in a lot of ways, the Whale Museum is the quintessential uh, institution in southeastern Massachusetts that holds on to a, a, a sort of a, a primacy of culture uh, and who gets to tell your story, uh, to quote uh, uh, Lin-Manuel uh, from, from Hamilton, you know, who gets to tell the story and the fact that we are, uh, and this is a conversation I have with Amanda, that the conversation around Portuguese culture and Azorian culture isn't this nice little add-on thing. Yeah. It is interwoven. It is part of the essence of it. It is not like we are here, we've got this uh, sort of confirmed cultural thing, and we'll, you know, we'll tap some Cape Verdean and some Azorian, and then we'll be more complicated. It is, it is not, that's not the way to do it. It has got to be infiltrated in a way that is significantly more robust. Uh, and really excited to see where that takes us. But in spite of COVID, Things are happening. We, we are meeting uh, through Zoom. Right. Uh, uh, we um, fabric 2020 this year. Uh, a lot of it, and it, it. I didn't expect it to. All of a sudden, when I heard the news, I got excited. I called Michael. I said, "I want you to come to my television show on the Portuguese channel to talk about the program." And in spite of COVID 19, you were doing this, and you did it. And, and so, uh, this is a good sign, a sign of strength, a sign, a sign, a sign of, of uh, resilience and persistence, uh, which is something that the Portuguese in the past have not had very much. Uh, they have, they are resilient uh, for, about work, about, but uh, cultural institutions, you know, um, well, they get excited and then, you know, um, because they require continuity and hard work and all this, uh, uh, but with leaders like Michael and uh, with institutions like uh, the New Bedford Whaley Museum, uh, and uh, look at what, what's happening with uh, the uh, Tagus Press, uh, with mm -hmm. Mario Pereira, who is uh, uh, also uh, half Portuguese, half Azorian, and half Menelander, uh, is really um, motivated and he, is, he has been doing a tremendous job. Uh, people don't uh, hear about him because he's such a subdued, quiet uh, person but he's quite effective. Uh, I meet with him regularly. Mm, we're planning all kinds of things. We're planning events because we're going to launch books also via Zoom. So there's, see, the thing is, there's a synergy. There's this group here doing this, there's that one, and they are interacting, uh, uh, touching, uh, and it, 
we don't need a superpower organizing this, but you know, no, no, let's no. see that there's one thing taking place here, some, something else out there, this group is doing this, and all these things are, are now surfacing and, and right. also uh, instilling pride, uh, an important thing again with the Portuguese Americans, the ones who have been uh, sort of laid law all these years and and, yeah. and now many of them you know they've had wonderful careers and they can come up and say hey i'm here well let us take advantage of your success and what you have done and your 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 youth still and your enthusiasm and let me because we're going to energize the younger generation uh, yeah. so so yeah. You know, you, you sort of touch on something that's, it, it speaks to me, it is almost like a power of the humility. You know, it, it is, it is, you know, and, the, you know, we referenced Michael Benavides' posture around that. And when he talks about being inspired by things like Tremors and Walk the Talk, um, there, you know, the stuff that is actually, you know, happening in Portugal as inspiration for something happening here. I mean, that speaks to such a self-awareness about what is possible and how you bring that over here and also just and, and this is this is where the boldness come in the you know the boldness of humility if you will uh where michael just uh and the whole group around fabric is so clear on the power of what they're doing that they can't but help do it um and when i think about it and just watching the videos that had been recorded uh previously in lisbon and samigal uh, and projected on, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem with uh, Fall River City Hall architecturally. I actually like brutalist architecture. I hate its placement, uh, but that said, I hate the highway there because there's a beautiful river underneath there, which we learned about, right? But being able to take that as a, um, as, as a canvas and project those beautiful musical videos on them in a way that almost felt the building was intentionally designed to take that, <laughs> I mean, it was like such brilliant audacity, and yet at the same time, it was just like, this is exactly why that is there. Mm. And I, I never even thought about that building in, in that way. And there's just something so, I actually also think so beautifully subversive uh, in it as, as how, we, how we talk about that. And I'm, you know, beyond excited about what that, uh, what that means for us going forward. It's a new spirit. Uh, I'll tell you another, another anecdote, a true anecdote. Uh, in the beginning, um, when I came, uh, Cinderella in Fall River, uh, Columbia Street, was a magnet. Uh, uh, it was a cafe for uh, all the Portuguese uh, youngsters. They were coming here. And after the revolution, some of the, uh, the, the more, uh, more well-to-do families sent their kids here instead of sending them to Lisbon because this was sort of a haven. And uh, <clears throat> so they would, you know, they did not know English, so they would go to, you know, the, the cafe was packed every day. Once, in a, one, once I stopped by, and all I heard from them was complaints because uh, America was terrible for them, America was forever. There's nothing to be done, nothing, blah, 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 blah. And so I told them, look, you, know, you can start doing something. Uh, Bristol Community College uh, offers uh, courses at night, uh, free courses, learn English, and they have uh, courses on, and then they have all sorts of things. You can, uh, theater may not, may be difficult for you because uh, you don't know enough, but there's arts, uh, there are there are courses, take them. Uh, then, uh, oh yes, well, then uh, uh, about a month later, I went by the same group was complaining and I asked them, it's about the same thing that I said, have you done anything? Uh, have you followed up on any, any of the suggestions I gave you? They had not. And I said, okay, you're doing one thing that the Portuguese know how to do very well and love doing it, is to complain. So if you want to complain, <laughs> keep complaining, I have more to do. So I left. But years later, one of the guys there came to me, came to visit me at Bram to tell me, thank you for the kick in the back you gave me. I heard what you said. I decided I went. I took my, uh, uh, my uh, um, associate degree um, three years ago, and then I moved to UMass Dartmouth. It was uh, uh, Southeastern Massachusetts University, and I just got my BA, and I want to thank you for having kicked me the way you did. I okay. love it. But, but, it was a, but the, this is to, 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 to underline the difference between the attitude today. People are not just talking or criticizing. They are actually doing things and seeing yeah. the potential, but acting on it. That's right. That's right, and and there's something so wonderfully 
exciting about that. And so uh, I, I want to um, touch on two more very, uh, very Portuguese topics with you before we uh, before we sign off. Um, what makes you uh, what makes you feel um, you know, and this is an obligation of our culture, right? Saudade. How is that in your life these days? All right. Uh, I don't think that you want to talk to me about that because I'm not okay. the best person to talk about it because I've written a book criticizing that there's a myth about this thing. As if, as if uh, nobody else uh, uh, felt so damn. I wow. say that the English uh, have, you know, the languages. Do you want me to go talk Please, about Please, no, that? I'm actually very intrigued by this because I well, have, I have yeah. fallen into the romance of this as a it notion. Is. It and is. Yeah, it is yeah. romantic and all this, but uh, the thing is, uh, uh, we may be more emotional than other people, but the concept of saudade, languages, languages uh, do not have the same word for the same thing. Sometimes a concept in one language is divided up and other lang one of the language has a portion of this concept is covered by one word and a, por a portion of the concept is covered by another word. The English have uh, 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 nostalgia, missing, longing, so they also do. They may be more detached or they may appear more detached, uh, but that's different. It does not that they don't have, they don't have, they don't have one word for it, they have a variety of them, okay? Right. So that's how I explain it. So, but then all of a sudden the Portuguese so that was so, has, has become so used about everything. Do you even say, oh, I, so that's the future. You know, I have so that's of the future. I mean, when you, over, when you use it about everything, so you say it's everywhere, of course, because you use it, you know, and you apply it to everything. You know, love is so that, you know, everything is so that. Bacalhau is so that, you know. Okay, so <laughs> then, <laughs> then the, 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 the word becomes, uh, 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 you cannot translate because, of course you cannot, because you use it about everything. I mean, <laughs> what is the connection between codfish and so that, you know? So that's, that's it. So now it has become, you know, you cannot, uh, if I say this, even to Portuguese uh, in Portugal, uh, uh, but uh, I, and I show them how linguistically this is this happens and 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 because there 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 is a their books uh, there is a book uh, an encyclopedia of untranslatable words and so that comes there and I tore it apart I mean it's, so but it's pretty you know, it was, oh nobody feels we you, we I I think we are more emotional uh, uh, yeah. we show more emotion than than uh, Americans in general do at least you know. Uh, in the south is is a bit different so we are uh, uh we express a feeling that so that captures and we but then we bring so that about everything i mean uh, uh, i i read i just was reading the obituaries those people talking about that they're that you know they feel so that but they don't use the word you know it comes a portuguese obituary oh so that's too much so we use it about everything so it does not mean that the others don't have the feelings yeah, they just yeah. Have to work. I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, Mr. Smith, I love that answer. I, I love that answer because it, it totally resonates with me. I mean, I, I think very much about, you know, you know, in English, melancholia. Uh, you know, it's like you don't have to scratch too. Absolutely, too melancholy. Far. Excuse me, melancholy. I have, I, I have read them. I melancholy appeared in Switzerland for the first time, as, and it became a field. And you def, read the definition; it is exactly the definition we give for so that. Melancholy, in the in the right. in the fifteen something or early sixteen hundred. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Well, the definition is exactly the definition that we give for so yeah. It's yeah. another word. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, um, I think we're about to run out of time, but I, I want to ask you one yeah, last one, yeah. question. Is um, and and we've touched on this a lot because I I have found this to be a very kind of hopeful conversation. But is there anything that we did not talk about? that you are particularly hopeful when you think about this bridge of connecting uh, Portugal and America culturally um, or, or <clears throat> sort of final thoughts or... or uh, My goodness, so much, so much stuff. All I would like to do is this, I would like this to be multiplied because I, st I still feel, this is now the, the, the pessimistic note, I should be doing this because there's a large community there. I would love to see more young people 
uh, going to school and be interested in the language and in the culture, but also even going to school, I, I, trying to attract them to, you know, to schools like Brown, it's, it's not easy. Uh, and that we should be, we should, that we should be far further ahead than we are in that way. Yeah. We as a community, we live much better off than people of our socioeconomic status. Mm. Not, it's not visible. The quality of life the Portuguese have is far higher than uh, average American because they build their homes, they keep them nice and clean, they eat very well. I mean, they have a great life. But, uh, s but, but uh, at the civic level and at the educational level, we must go higher and we can go higher. So I would love to see more young people going, looking and be more aggressive and be more interested in, in, in going into to fields and we don't have enough in medicine, we don't have enough in, 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 in the sciences, we don't and we, we have to have them. So that's, this is one, if we have another conversation, uh, I'd like it to be about education, but, but it is, a study has been made about the US, about the uh, Southeast New England showed that the level, well, the, the level of education does not show also, uh, 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 does not represent or capture very well what's going on there because many of the Portuguese immigrants here come with, are still here, um, are still alive, uh, and they came with a third grade. So the, the, the average is really low, but their lifestyle has nothing to do with Americans who have not gone beyond third grade, not at all. So, so, but the bad thing about it is this, the image that the outsiders have of the community when they look at statistics is that, oh, the community is, no, the community is a lot better, lives a lot better off, has a much better quality of life than you even dream of. But there's one point, the level of education of the new generation has to go higher than it is now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would love to have that conversation with you because uh, you know, here at the Community Foundation, arts and culture is important, but when you look at where we spend a lot of our time and energy and effort, it is absolutely around uh, education and how we elevate this region. So I, I would love to make that date with you on SML. That would actually be great. Well, my, my um, thank you so much for this. This has been, everyone told me it would be an absolute treat to speak with you and it exceeded expectations. Uh, I hope, uh, uh, hope you enjoyed the conversation too, but I really, uh, had a great time speaking with you. Thank you so much. Same, same here. And let us hope COVID uh, disappears so we can get together in New Bedford and uh, uh, one of the, the many good restaurants there and chat, uh, shoot the breeze for, for, for a long time, for a while. I would like that. We can have a little Sadat Khan. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a pleasure.